This is Brenda Wood Bay, The Ninth Step, Part 6. When we last saw our murder mavens, they had just completed the first round of the televised portion of the Thanksgiving edition of the Jolly Good Baking Show, and pies were made and judged. And then while the show was, or while, you know, there was a production break, host Paul Riviera was found dead in his trailer. He was um, on his hands and knees. He was, I don't think I mentioned this last time, but he was in his underwear. And he had his hands tied behind his back with nylon cords that were pl plaited like a, like a plaited bread roll. And then um, he had flour dusted on his face, what appears to be flour. And there were not many people who could have done it because the most of the production had like gone off to lunch. And so the only people who were around when it happened were your two fellow competitors, Melanie Blair and Scott Lamb, uh, Buck, a local boy who is the cameraman, uh, Sue Mellon and Timothy Bush, the two presenters, Heath Hendricks, the sort of overarching producer of everything, Jane Leaf, Paul's co-judge, and Donna, Donna Riviera, who is Paul's wife. And so I think while Heath and production get this sorted out, they are they are they are particularly interested in not calling the police right now because they don't want their production disrupted. I think they're going to try to finish this episode. And so you all have a little bit of like leeway here to begin investigating. Um, who has, well, let's just, uh, go around the table first and figure out what everyone's interested in doing in terms of questioning people or looking around and then we'll get the scenes sorted out. So doll, what do you think? Uh, as a very big fan of Paul Riviera, I am going to go and take a look in his trailer at the place where he died. Is his body still in there? Body's still in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm going to go in there. Uh, what about you, Rosemary? Oh, I'm definitely following Doll into the trailer. Sounds good, uh, Muriel. Um, I think, yeah, I'm I'm not going to be near the trailer. Um, kind of like what's around us again. Well, so in terms of like, uh, I mean, there's the judges' tent, which is mm -hmm. where they film the little judge segments. Uh, there's Timothy and Sue's trailer; they each have their own trailer. There's Jane's trailer. Um, there's probably just general, like, sort of, you know, like, kind of, uh, like a production booth set up mm -hmm. where they can watch video and stuff. And um, I feel like Muriel is going to go poking around. She's she's walking around set. I think the judges' tent is where she's going to head to. Okay, I like that. Yeah. And Alice. Alice is going to take the opportunity, while it may seem a little suspicious, is going to take the opportunity. Once again, another murder has struck Brindlewood Bay. So Alice is going to try to see if there's a connection through all of them, if there's something going on. And the best way to do that is to go to the beginning, go to the oh, source. Good. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, so you're going to take a little trip over to... Well, at this point, like he would be in like prison. So, I mean, you taking like a little road trip to the prison? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Screw. I just go, just gonna like lead over to the ladies and be like, "I'll be right back, girls. I I have something I have to do, and I think, well, y'all got bakes, y'all y'all got cakes to bake. All right. Oh, I've so got you're, my own. So you're, you're 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 self disqualifying yourself, or you're yeah, yourself from the competition unless there, like. Or? Unless like Heath is like suspending production for the day, like like all right, we're done. Like we'll get back to this tomorrow morning. <laughs> like well, no, we no, they're through. they're like oh, they're, they're still going. They're recalibrating. They're figuring out what to do Shit. until they they're gonna just like come up with a story why Paul's not there. So, I, I think um yeah, Alice would just be like uh be like a uh, yeah yeah I'm not gonna win this thing anyways. They're just gonna pull out a store bought cake and then pull out like a like a store bought just like just like there's pie here's cake here's a bunch of cookies. Here, like it's just like got the whole thing. It's like I didn't know which one to pick from, so here you go. Just put them in there. I don't know. Ooh, pecans! You know, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, well then that sounds good. Um, well then why don't we start with Doll and Rosemary in Paul's trailer? 
So what's your approach here at all? What do you do? Well, I suppose I'm not as nervous as I would be if he was alive. So there's a small silver lining. I think I'm going to take a look, a, a good look at his body and see if there's anything we missed, see if we can find a cause of death, anything, fingerprints, you know. Uh, go ahead and been missed. roll a meddling move with um, reason. All right. That is a nine. All right, we'll come back to that. Um, and what are you doing, Rosemary? Well, since <laughs> we might have just immediately go back to that, because I do have a move when I enter a location for the first time, I get to ask, what is about to happen? Uh, so okay. <laughs> that uh, might be about, relevant. Uh, what's about to happen is that Donna Riviera is about to enter the scene in order to... Um, uh, you know, mourn over the body of her husband. Oh, why is it about to happen? What she's actually going to do is try to hide some something incriminating, maybe not of the murder necessarily, but something just, relevant. Uh, something relevant to her personal situation. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you'll see Donna coming down the way. Uh, so, with that in mind, what do you do? Um. I'm I'm keeping like near like the door and like keeping an eye and like just seeing like because like I can like, like I can see her like approaching from out a window and whatnot and if like mm. I'm like right at a door I can either stop her and and or figure out what she's trying to hide mm, yeah I like that um let's check in with Muriel real quick Muriel the judge's tent This is, um, I think like when you get there, there are some like production folk that are sort of, uh, you know, just out of frame, so to speak, that are like in quiet but frenzied tones trying to figure out like what the hell to do with this situation and if they can salvage this episode or not. The tent itself is a backdrop that's meant to depict Brindlewood Bay, but it's actually Martha's Vineyard. Um, <laughs> it's just <laughs> closest they could get. Uh -huh. Um, or maybe someone made a mistake and there's like red, white, and blue bunting all over. And I want to paint the scene here. The judge's tent is normally decorated to look like a quaint cottage somewhere in the English countryside, but has been given an American flair for this special episode. What sort of American goo do we see? There's a cornucopia on the judge's desk. That is, uh, it's, it is horrendous. It is a golden baseball trophy with like a, you know, like nest of like green grass, like, you know, thing. there's just a, there's sort of a, a baseball sitting on top of like a cake. There's like, like this weird baseball centerpiece that's kind of just in the middle of the table. There's a recreation of Mount Rushmore, but it has the faces of the judges and the presenters in from the show instead and it's somehow for some reason surrounded by hot dogs surprisingly from the discount rack to, uh like at the local like convenience store in birdwood bay they managed to find some leftover fourth of july decorations so like every so often you can see like little like happy fourth of july like in the background they tried to hide it up just to get all the red, white, and blue coloring out there, but it, you can still see it. They found from a popular fast food fish restaurant called Davy Jones's Locker a plaster statue of the mascot Davy Jones and said, yeah, that's good enough. That's close enough to a New England fisherman, and they have it set up in the corner. <laughs> I love it. Well, Muriel, you've kind of got the run of the place. No one's going to stop you from poking around. You just look like a, uh, you know, a contestant slash fan trying to take in the ambiance. So, what do you do? Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe Paul and Jane 
when they walked off, maybe they recorded a, a bit of a judge's commentary segment here before they kind of like halted production for a little bit. So mm-hmm. she's mostly just kind of like looking around um, the set to see if she notices anything, whether that's like picking up. I, I think right now she's, she's just playing it cool. She's just like mm-hmm. walking around, just kind of like listening to the conversation of the production folk around her. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, just loosely examining the set, not like, you know, scrutinizing it, just kind of just trying to pick up on the small things, just focusing um, go ahead and roll with uh, reason. Okay. Sounds good. Let me grab my dice. With reason, I don't think Isaiah Langmore is going to stop me here. No. <laughs> uh, that is a 10. 10. Nice. Okay, good. And let's, let's check it with Alice. So, Alice, I want to read your move just for people who are <clears throat> watching the video and for us as well. The Clary Starling move. So this move has no function until you solve a mystery and put a suspect behind bars, which we've done. Thereafter, you can name an imprisoned suspect your consultant, and you've decided that Albert Krauss, the beginning, the first killer in this sequence of of murders in town, is your consultant. Once per mystery, you can go to the prison the consultant's being held in and ask them about that mystery. This triggers the meddling move as it would uh, when questioning any other character, but the consultant's answers and behavior are behavior are affected by your most recent crown of the void. And so you have marked a shadow in the garden, which means the consultant will, uh, will claim to see malevolent spirits all around you. We'll see. Um, I love it. So go ahead and roll. Well, let's just get the scene going first. So I think it's very like, I think it is very like, Clary Starling. It's very Silence of the Lambs. You know, it's a dark, like, kind of uh, check-in area. Um, and you have to put all of your, like, normally in this type of show, you'd put your gun and all this other stuff in the basket. What do you put in the basket? Uh, puts a camera. Yeah. A, uh, a uh, bag of the Andes mints. Uh, then a, a keychain that has way too many keys. Like I think Alice has kept every single key that has ever been in her life on this one key ring. Uh, and then a stress ball that's in the shape of a like a, the shape of a skull, but it's like a fun little skull. <laughs> uh, pro- probably from the Halloween party. Mm. Uh, <laughs> from the last mystery. Uh, and um, and just sets her bag that's probably been like one of those like i'm a cool grandma type of bags you know like one of the it's like an over over the shoulder just messenger bag type thing um slouch bag and uh she takes a deep breath and waits at the door for the gate to open oh yeah they buzz you in you know and you there's a slide of a you have metal bars Mm -hmm. as you're allowed to go back and I think it's one of those like scenes where like all the prisoners are yelling at you, but they're not yelling obscene things because you're a little old lady, not like a, you know, not like a hot woman. Right. So they're yelling things like, Hey grandma, why don't you, why don't you bake me some cookies or, um, you know, uh, you know, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. um, Luckily no Migs. Great. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And finally you get to, a very like heavy security area. I don't know why they're keeping Albert Krauss here, but they they lead you back. And indeed, like Hannibal Lecter, Albert Krauss, who looks just like the actor John Malkovich, is behind a large plexiglass wall, right? Which is illuminated by a single bright fluorescent light up above. And I think he gets up from his little bed. I think he has managed to secure a, um, a sound system so he can play music, uh, in his little, in his little cubicle cell. Um, but it's, you know, you would expect it to be classical music or something like that. Right. But, uh, no, it's, it's nothing like that. It's like, um, it's like, uh, let's see. Um, uh it's not unusual da, 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 da. Yeah, it's like that right tom Remember jones the, yeah. yeah tom jones yeah it's like tom jones and he gets up 
and he walks over to the plexiglass and he pushes the button so that you can hear his voice. And he says, why, hello, Miss Olinger. I knew that you would be coming to see me soon, but I didn't think it would be this soon. Tell me, what sorts of troubles have befallen our quaint little New England town? What can I say, Mr. Kraus, or should I say Mr. Kraus Malkovich? I prefer star of stage and screen John Malkovich. Well, John, I'll have to tell you. I didn't want to come and find you. I wanted to stay far away from a monster like you, but something kept pulling me to you. Ever wow. since you came to our small, quaint New England coastal town, month after month, more and more people are dropping like flies. And I think he just kind of like smiles. Go ahead and roll the meddling move with the presence. See how this goes. Okay. All right. No whammies. Some whammies. We got an eight. Okay. We'll come back to this. Okay. So, doll. You got a mixed result, right? Um, let's do a clue first. You were kind of generally looking at the body, right? Yeah, poking around at his body. Yeah. Well, one thing you'll see is that there is tossed or kicked beneath his little table area, his little like kind of dressing, you know, like table or whatever. Underneath it, you see a ball gag. This might have been a this might have been a sex thing, but who knows? Or maybe somebody wants it to seem like a sex thing. But in any case, that's your clue. I think the what should the complication here be? Um I think the complication is just going to be Donna showing up. I think that was what I kind of planned. And then I just leaned into it and Rosemary asked her question. I think she like steps in and sees you with the ball gag. Right. And she's like, <laughs> I knew my Paul was into some pretty kinky things, but well, <clears throat> and she's sort of, circling around the body she says i didn't think it was going to go like this i didn't think this is how i was going to lose my paul but i am comforted with the thought that he at least enjoyed his last few moments in life you you're not particularly bothered by this no i'm very bothered but okay. Well, I, I am <clears throat> so sorry, Mrs. Riviera. I, I imagine this must be just really horrible for you. It I was is... a big fan of your husband. Yes, well, um, I just can't believe somebody would kill him. I mean, mind you, he was always doing my head in. If anyone had a reason to sack him off, it was me, but I didn't do it. Oh. Do you know who did? No, only that I didn't. And she's kind of very like nervously looking at the two of you. And she's like, what are the two of you doing in here? Well, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're a bit of a local phenomenon. Uh, we investigate mysteries. And since, well, you're not letting the police in, it would help that it, we would investigate it 
even if it were just to make sure that you didn't get blamed for it, of course, because it so far it looks like this could have been you. And Rosemary, you will see her. She's walking like she's kind of circling the trailer, keeping her mm-hmm. back away from you. And she kind of like goes up to like a little bookcase. And she's clearly like grabbing something behind her back and yeah. slipping it, you know, kind of uh, I, behind I, her. I will modify that a little bit with my Sherlock Holmes move. And I'm uh, going to say that she has just like this extravagantly big purse. And oh, okay. Like, yeah. And that's where. Right. So. So Donna, like, like, have you? Did you see anyone near the trailer while we were all baking? Because like you were, presumably on sets. You may have seen something. I think she's like, no, no, no. I didn't see anything. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, I was just going around making sure, um, you know, making sure some of the the lads from production were being taken care of yeah. and she it, is working her way now to the exit of the trailer trying yeah. to leave with whatever she just grabbed as like she leaves starts like leaving trailer like we sort of like bump into each other and i'm just gonna slip my hand into her purse mm-hmm. and try to grab whatever's in there it's a day move what are you afraid is gonna happen if you fail um, she's gonna catch me with my hand in her purse. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead and roll with composure. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna make you because you're suspicious. I'm gonna put you at disadvantage. Yeah, I ro- I don't really have any like things that I can help you with. But let's see. Oh my god, this is amazing. Um, with composure. Uh, that's a 12. Oh, wow. Okay. I rolled two sixes and a five. I'll let you do it. And as your bonus, I'll, I'll have it be a clue as well. Um, she leaves thinking that she got away with it. Mm-hmm. And she, and when you, when you look at what it is, it's a stack of love letters. It's a stack of love letters from the British prime minister to unclear who it's to they're never identified meanwhile muriel what'd you get on your roll a 10 just a 10 yeah Mm -hmm. Mm. (laughs) oh you find a shattered britty award (sighs) that has been quickly dusted and pushed into a corner the shards oh how how interesting indeed what do you do then uh i feel like she sees the shards it's not gonna is is gonna is gonna like reach in and pick up the like uh, the little fragment that identifies it as a britty award um and she'll just like pocket that she's not gonna take the whole like bundle of it just like whatever like plaque remains essentially Yeah, yeah um it was Paul's Britty Award. Okay, I figured. Yeah. Is uh is Timothy Bush around nearby? He's probably in his trailer. Yeah. Uh, Muriel wants to Muriel wants to go knock on Timothy Bush's trailer. He lets you in. Uh you can hear the cure playing on uh Timothy's stereo when you go inside. There are black light posters. He has an obelisk in one corner of the trailer for some reason. Paint the scene, everyone. What do we see in Timothy's trailer that suggests he is a deeply lonely person? He's got a waifu pillow. Who's the waifu? (laughs) Jane Leaf. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, horrifying. I was going to say the queen, but I like like Jane Leaf. But no, I think it's the queen. It's the queen. I can't believe you stole that, Amanda. Uh, he has a like his like you know trailer vanity mirror 
like the, the makeup mirror um has a like projected image it's like it's like this expensive it's like one of those mirrors that like has like it can like play like you know like like video on it or something and it has a recorded image of timothy's face looking outward saying you are smart you are kind you are important <laughs> damn you took i was gonna have sticky notes all over the place of just positive affirmations um we see on a uh, couch on like one end of the trailer, it's like a nice little love seat that they have in there. Um, there are stacks upon stacks of crossword puzzles, Sudoku puzzles that have all been filled out and they are tabbed for like favorite ones. And it's just, it's just like all these little games that you can play by yourself just over here on this like love seat. <laughs> There's, on, like, the Vandy, there's just these piles of fan letters from over the years, and, like, it's very clear that they are, they are read through daily. Nice. Um, Timothy, tall, like, like, he's very, like, large. He has to actually, like, bend down, like, to the frame of the door so you can kind of see his face. Uh, and he says, Oh, Muriel, uh, how are you holding up, dear? It's so terrible what happened to Paul. Hey, it's absolutely terrible. I'm f I'm doing all right. I wanted to swing by. Uh, and if it's not too much, uh, if I'm not overstepping my bounds, Mr. Bush, I wanted to come check on you. That's very, very nice of you. Yes, please, come in, come in. Hey, hey, you have a very unique trailer mr bush it's um the black lights are uh, uh, uh quite uh potent well you know me i don't like to be in the sunlight if i can help it no you, you are a quite a pale gentleman I, it's actually uh it's uh, i've noticed it um I, if it's, uh, mr bush if it's not uh out of line for me to say this my late husband Gavin and I, we didn't watch a lot of television back in Scotland, but when he was alive, well, our favourite programme in the years before his death was the HR gang. And he um, kind of just like gives a nice, like, sweet smile and says, that's, that's so nice. I really love Scotland. Do you know, have you been... Oh, yes, many times. I love the misty moors. I love the locks. I feel like when I'm there, my solitude has meaning. You're a, you're a, you, you like to be alone? She says, looking at the tree around them. <laughs> no, but unfortunately, it's the cruel fate that I've been dealt Whatever do you mean by that, Mister Boot? You're a star. What do you, what do you mean you've been dealt a hand of solitude? You're a famous comedian. People, oh, you make people laugh. This is Muriel. Would you share a glass of absinthe with me? Well, I haven't had absinthe since the late eighties, but you know, I'm game. And he gets his little absinthe set, ready to go, to, and he's getting it all set up. We'll come back to this. Miss Olinger, I think you should know that you haven't come here alone. I see things about you. There's something hovering, whispering, whispering truths, whispering secrets. It's looking me in the eyes, even now, as we speak. It tells me that I should hate you, because you put me here. But I think there's more to the story. 
It's telling me things about you, Miss Olinger. He puts his ear up to the plexiglass. Oh, yes. I see. Miss Olinger, I regret to inform you that you're going to die. That's a mighty astute observation you have there, John. You're quite perceptive. I don't mean in the normal course of one's life. I mean you're going to die suddenly, tragically, violently. And you're not even famous enough to have your death portrayed in the future by a well-known C-list or higher actress, which is a real shame. I'll let you know, John, that I have been told many a times that I look strikingly similar to Meryl Streep, particularly in The Devil Wears Prada. And he says, don't you ever, ever say that witch's name to me again. I won't go into the Merrill incident here, Miss Olinger, but just know that it is a tale filled with regret, vengeance, utter despair. The utter despair that your friends and family are going to feel when you die, Miss Olinger. But you should know that I will mourn you. Well, John, I would like to hear that sordid tale. And I wouldn't mind coming back and visiting you so you can tell me more about how I'm going to die. But I need you to do something for me. Yes. Help a girl out. Bodies are piling up. I could really use a hand. And things are getting weirder and weirder around Blindlewood Bay. I can feel it. And I think at this point, he will ask you for the basic details of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And assuming you tell him, he will say, Well, what's that old canard? Follow the money. I think that's probably applicable here too, Miss Olinger. I happen to know for a fact that Paul was engaged in some very, very high stakes contractual negotiations with the production. And I know this because they were considering replacing him. I was asked to take his place. I, of course, would never be caught dead doing television. And apart from that, I have a terrible, terrible gluten intolerance. But I think that there was some, well, money-related drama going on with Mr. Riviera. I would start looking there. But as to your bigger question, Ms. Olinger, why Brindlewood Bay? Why all these deaths? I think you're not going to like the answer. And he kind of steps back. He sits back down in his little bed. And he says, don't forget what I said. There are shadows over your shoulder. And they are whispering unfortunate things about you, Miss Hollinger. And I'm going to give you a condition, shadows over your shoulder. And you have your clue as well, which was just the contractual 
uh, trouble with Paul. Excellent. Excellent. So once you're done with um, finding the ball gag and dealing with Donna and all that stuff is going, you just found these, you know, you, you both just have these letters from the prime minister, the British prime minister. What do you all do then? Oh, Rosemary, I think, I think this might be a little bit bigger than our typical murders. Prime minister, that's, I mean, almost as famous in the UK as the queen mm. or Rest in peace, of course. Bless. Yes, it's very odd. And do you know what else is odd about these letters? Um, some of them at the edges of the paper, like as I take a look at it very closely with my Phoenix right move, they have lipstick on it. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you took Phoenix right. I love it. Very, Ro very good. Rosemary's just all about those details. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll also, doll, what, now what? I'm going to go take a look around the baking set and see if there's anything I can find. Maybe somebody left something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I feel like we need to, to spread out. Look right. for more things. Look for more clues. You know what? I'll, I I think I'll go talk to Scott Lamb. And I think before you all have a chance to do that, Heath is gathering Mavens up. He hasn't found you yet, Muriel, but he finds Doll and Rosemary and says, "Okay, ladies, we are going to press forward. We've come up with a story for Paul for right now. We're going to say that." He fell ill, that he uh, had um, one too many slices of 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 over dry turkey, uh, and he's not feeling well. And so uh, it's just going to be Jane judging your cakes, but we need to go ahead and head to set. Get back to the tent so we can go ahead and film the next segment. Where is Ms. McGregor? Where's Scott? Where's Melanie? And he's sort of um, and, and and what about Ms. Olinger? And someone tells him Ms. Olinger left completely. And he's like, okay, um, we're going to just say she died. Is that good? Everybody good with that? No, don't say that she died. <laughs> and we'll have the whole in memoriam. It'll be great. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile. The in memoriam is just clips of her with her pie. <laughs> Played slowly over sad music, black and white. <laughs> if months from now, like this, this episode plays, and like the citizens of Brindwood Bay watch it, it, what's gonna happen? Are is 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 Miss Oldinger just gonna get flowers at her doorstep? So many casseroles. So many casseroles. Timothy Bush, uh, go ahead and roll a meddling move with presence to see. I'm if not okay right now. Up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, meddling. <laughs> tears, meddling actually. move with presence. Yes. Yeah, you got it. Oh my god, Ooh. that out of everything killed me. Uh, meddling move plus presence. Um, you know what? I'll I'll here's what I'll do. I'll uh get advantage on this. I'll s offer Mr. Bush some of the uh, I, I I I you know have it in a thermos, the steeped calming decoction herb oh mixture. yeah it's good like you yeah. know just you know just for your for your nerves or for your uh whatever you got going on um so i'll roll with advantage i'll mark that off i love this move or this uh this this ability i have all right that's cocked there we go uh and then plus my presence mm -hmm. eight hmm He drinks this and he's like, what did you put in this? Is this some Ooh. kind of, some kind of elixir meant to spark amorous feelings? 
not meant to spark amorous feelings, but I, uh, I, it is. I guess you could call it an elixir. I thought it would pair nicely with the absinthe, uh, kind of the. Uh, I noticed is that is that an and is that actual legitimate Victorian era? That is, it looks like it. He takes your hand. Oh, or what are you doing, Mister Bush? Muriel, can Mr. I call Bush. you my little shortbread? You, under no circumstances can you call me my little shortbread. Your little shortbread. Nobody's little shortbread. I'm frightened, Muriel. Actually, uh, Jason, if it's okay with you, that's actually a perfect segue into my uh, crown flashback that I've oh. had for a couple sessions now. If I can narrate that right now. Oh, please do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I've had, because uh, two sessions ago, I marked Crown of the Queen, a flashback of your fondest memory with one of your children. Um, which we established that Muriel never had kids, but uh, she and Gavin did adopt uh, their nephew, Hamish, after uh, who was uh, the son of Gavin's sibling. Um, so I think as as, as Mr. Bush is, is, as Timothy Bush is doing this, Muriel thinks back, back to Glasgow many, many, many years ago. Um, this is a, probably like a, late 30s early 40s muriel um and we see it's the interior of the pub that they had to that she and gavin had together you can see gavin in in the back kitchen truly a mountain of a man uh and he is just tending to a frying basket of cod and chips um when uh and she's like you know you know pouring uh you know, beers from the tap to the patrons and all that. There's a, uh, the crappy little TV monitor they had rigged up on the counter is playing that the football game, uh, much to the, 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 the causing a bit of a row in the pub, um, when she's calling after Hamish to come help her, uh, and she has to call a few times when we hear a door slam, uh, like, and she, uh, kind of throws the towel over her shoulder and, and goes out to the back door, which has been slammed and steps out behind the pub, which is kind of near uh, like the riverfront. So she sees that Hamish, uh, who is kind of like a, a teen, probably maybe around 15 or 16 at this time, has stormed out the back and is kind of just jumped over the little railing along the harbor front and is just like sitting on the rocks that, you know, lead down there. Uh, and she just kind of furrows her brow, lights a cigarette, and just kind of like walks over to the edge, just kind of like leaning her elbows up there, says, you know, when we're busy, I do kind of need help, Hamish. And he doesn't respond. And she goes, oh, for goodness sake, boy, why do you? And then she notices that he's crying. And so she kind of like, you know, her brow furrows, kind of the hardness edges off, and she uh, climbs over steps delicately down to the rocks has to like you know get her tartan skirt kind of like you know has like you know pulled up to like sit down properly and brush it off and like looks over at hamish um and she says what's wrong and hamish is just like and i said i'm so, i'm sorry auntie i just i didn't i just didn't and he can't finish the word so Mila just puts over puts a hand on it and pats his back and says I, uh, no, it's, it's all right. I didn't, I wasn't trying to be hurt. I, uh, what, what's, what's going on? And Hamish just kind of like lets his long sigh and just goes, I miss him. I really miss him. Ah, uh, kiddo, I miss him too. And Gavin, he misses him most of all, I'm sure. But you are, <sighs> yeah, it's hard. That is, that is, but you know, I know we're not the same thing, but we are here for you, boy. And uh, I don't want to make your life any harder. So I know I said I was going to put you to work. But today, if you need time, if you need time ever, you take what you need to do and take it in stride. And if you ever need help, call me, call Gavin. I'll deal with it. Gavin will tell me to deal with it. So... Is there anything I can get for you right now? And Hamish just kind of like looks over at, at Muriel, a uh, small little smile. And she said, and he says, 
Well, actually, Auntie, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if um could we go get fish and chips, not from the pub, but could we go just walk down to the market and maybe just I don't know. It's what it's what Ma and Da always like doing. And uh, Mira says, Well, you see all those customers we got in there, boy. Fuck them. Let's go to the market and I will buy you whatever you want. And the two of them spend a little bit of that afternoon just enjoying company as aunt and nephew. Very nice. And as you come out of that reverie. Yeah, I'm holding his hand. I just go, just a nice presence. Yeah. He says, I'm in a load of trouble, Muriel. I was dragged into the office of the head of the BBC right before we came over here. I was getting dressed down because I guess I'm not really pulling my weight. I'm not really considered much of a draw for the audience. And then I got so sick, I vomited on him. I just vomited right on him. And I I don't think I'm going to have a job when I get back. I see. Well, do you suffer from anxiety, Mr. Bush? <sighs> and he says, I don't know. I always thought that anxiety was something that smarter people suffered from. But I guess possibly. I, 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 I think you are a very smart man, Mr. Bush, and a very talented man. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with get it, pursuing a clinical diagnosis. I might all be about herbal medicine, but I also fully understand the necessity of having a kind of firm, you know, medical understanding of what's going on in your head. And if you're suffering from from what sounds like some crippling anxiety, well, that's that's just that's holding you back. It's not because it's not because you are wrong. It's just you've got some problems that need to be dealt with, and. If you vomited on the director of the BBC, oh, screw the director of the BBC. You've got, look at your line of work. Muriel, I'm living a lie. A lie? I know how to bake. (gasps) I'm the best baker in the tent. I made my, I made my sister's wedding cake. But, But Timothy, four seasons ago, you said you couldn't tell the difference from shortbread and f- and white cake. He says, and he's like, and he starts crying. He's like, I've been living a lie. I can bake. I'm a baker. I just pretend to be a buffoon who doesn't know anything about baking. That's why I say it so often, because I hope if I say it over and over and over again in a single episode, then people have to believe it, right? Why? Why would you do such a thing? Because that's what they wanted. They Why, want... Timothy Bush? Why? And he just, and then he like, he runs to the back and throws up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, okay. But hey. I think that I'm going to... um I'm not going to give you a condition or anything. I like how that played out. <laughs> okay. Let's cut back. You have your clue though. Uh, your clue oh. is kind of, uh, you can kind of interpret it both. E- either he's about to be fired or he's a, he's a liar. Maybe combine them into one idea, but that he knows how to bake. Okay. In any case, let's cut back over to Alice Olinger and then I have one more scene with Alice and then we're going to go on break. Alice, as you, I, are you going to head back to Brindlewood Bay after you're done at the prison? Okay. Yeah, yeah. As you head back to Brindlewood Bay, you start seeing some really unusual things. You drive by a trendy little outdoor bistro. And you see a trio of well-dressed, well-coiffed women having lunch, or late afternoon lunch. 
and they look up at you all at once and they all raise their hands and wave at you and you can see now that they have the exact same haircut they're wearing the exact same strand of pearls they're wearing the exact same white blouse and then they go back to eating their meal you see that dog again the dog that has a fifth leg it just wanders across the road and then you hit the brakes because there's a pair of little girls wearing matching pink dresses And they look up at you and they say, in unison, embrace the void. I would like for you to roll the day move. What are you afraid is going to happen if you lose your nerve right now? Uh, that Alice actually will just have a mental breakdown in her car, just right there in the middle of the street. Like, just, just, just that kind of after experiencing. Actor stage and screen, John Malkovich, and all that. It's just like, just it's all letting go, just all of it right there in broad daylight. Roll composure. Um, all right. Oh, I'm decent at that. And I think because of shadows over your shoulder, I'm going to put you at disadvantage as well. Okay, that makes sense. That tracks. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. That is a six. We fast forward. A few months from now. We see Alice Olinger being led into this secure part of the prison which is actually a sort of psychiatric ward. Albert Krauss sees you as they bring you in and he says, well, I suppose we're going to be neighbors now, Miss Olinger. We're going to get to be very, very good friends. And they put you in the cell next to him and lock the door. We won't speak of what terrible crime you committed after your break. But it is the last we will see of poor Alice Olinger. Unless you put on a crown. Absolutely putting on a crown. <laughs> as cool as that is. Just like as cool as that is. That has to be one of the hardest reactions I've ever seen a keeper give. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. It was but great. a glimpse. It was but a glimpse. Please describe how you keep it together instead. Um, I think there's a moment of Alice breaking. There's a hiccup, a hitch in her throat, or there's just like a small noise that comes out. And then there's just that nostril flare and that crease in the forehead slowly rolls the window down of her Ford Fiesta and then just lays on the hound on the, on the horn and just leans her head out the window. And she says, if you bespeckled bubble gum looking bitches don't get out of the road right now, I'm going to get out of this car. I'm going to put you across my knee and tear your hide myself. You understand? And then just bump, 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 just repeatedly just <laughs> fabulous let's take a five minute break doll rosemary muriel you're back at your workstations so is scott and melanie and melanie has already given like three confessionals uh to the camera talking about how sad she is about about uh paul uh until they came and reminded her that paul's not actually dead um and so she's 
uh she films another one saying i'm i'm just so sad i'm so sad that paul has a stomach bug and that's good they give her the thumbs up they begin the the segment timothy and jane and sue mellon are all there sue says now contestants i have a couple of couple of tragedies unfortunately that we're dealing with today for our cake round our beloved judge paul riviera he had a little bit too much pumpkin pie and he's feeling a little unwell and so he's not going to be joining us for the cake round equally tragic your fellow contestant miss alice olinger has died you just hear from off the screen or somebody shouting, Alice is it dead? She yes, she is. She was wandering around set and there was a terrible deep pothole in the ground and she fell right in. And well, unfortunately, when this Alice fell down the hole, there wasn't Wonderland waiting for her on the other end. She just sort of broke her neck and now she's quite quite dead does the episode cut to confessionals of the mavens about oh, reacting yes. to their yeah. dead friends they, they, they like yeah like wait the show will cut to an memoriam <laughs> and she says it's true alice was only with the franchise for about 20 minutes but she was like family truly I I love that 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 unusual pie she made. It was so delicious and had such a funny name. And we're just going to miss her so much. But hey, on the plus side, the chances of each of you winning has just gone up. And so now the baking begins. Alice, you can be on set, having returned from from from, from the prison. You're just kind of showing up in the background on occasion. Why is everybody so sad? And the baking begins now. In this round, we're going to cut straight to judging. You know, there's a frenzied. You know, jolly good baking show music playing, da 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 da, and all that is going on, bum bum bum, and it's over. And now the judging begins. Jane says, "Rosemary, dear, would you bring your cake forward?" And Rosemary, if you will just show us your cake that you baked. Okay. There we go. Cake is being shared. Um, it is a very plain looking cake. Like it looks just like the little tree log with the little festive details on it. And currently it is made of like multiple layers of like chocolate and vanilla like cake with a very plain buttercream icing in between. Jane says, I really love what you've done here with scale. It really triggers the imagination. One thinks that this is either an incredibly enormous tree, or these are just particularly tiny pumpkins. But the overall effect is, is, is excellent. And she's going to take a bite. And she says, the cake is very good. It is moist. I think that you used just a little bit too much cocoa for my taste, but a perfectly worthy effort. And next comes doll. Doll, be a doll and bring up your cake, please. Well, my cake is 
mostly fondant. I was I really wanted to to make up for the disaster in the in the pie round and you know re show my appreciation for Paul who can't be here and well I'm rather proud of myself. <laughs> And I think uh, Heath Hendricks is like wildly waving his hands to get Buck to move the camera away from said cake. And they actually have another cake in the wings. And it's just like a, a cake that's like shaped like a turkey. And they bring it out and they set it down. And and then they judge that cake instead. Um, and Doll is sent on her way. Uh, for people who are listening to this rather than watching... Um, the cake is a picture of Paul Riviera's face <laughs> with <laughs> with rest in peace crossed out and happy Thanksgiving written on his forehead. <laughs> Very good. It's worth seeing. Please watch the video. <laughs> Muriel, dear, would you bring up your cake? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm just emotionally recovering from that. Oh, okay. Share screen. Oh, hold on. There we go. Now I can share. Uh, there. I think this is how this works. Yes. Right. Uh, I have prepared a traditional Scottish Dundee cake. It is um, I have uh, it is made uh, uh out of um flour, eggs, butter, um. A little salt, uh, but the primary ingredients of a Dundee cake are the raisins, uh, the Seville marmalade, which is sweet and bitter and offset nicely by the raisins, as well as the almonds that also make it up as well. I I love this. This It's a simple cake. It's a fairly simple presentation. One is put in mind of little mice crawling towards a piece of cheese, perhaps nestled in the center of the cake, or perhaps a nest of cockroaches that's been painted white one by one, and they're crawling about. The cake itself is quite delicious. It is packed cram jam full of raisins and sultanas. And I think all in all, this is a very, very fine effort. Thank you, Muriel. Mm. Melanie brings up her cake. Um, it is classic Jolly Good Baking Show moment where the cake is accidentally uh, shaped like a dick and everyone's laughing about it. Jane doesn't understand what's so funny and she's just ready to get to the judging. And the cake was delicious, of course. And then Scott brings up his cake, and his cake is also quite good. Everything is going to plan as far as Heath Hendricks is concerned. Uh, doll's cake aside. Alice, you have the run of the place right now. No one's paying attention to you. What are you doing? I think Alice... Everybody's focused on these cakes and everything. These... These little interesting little things going on, whatever, you know, people go wild for the baked goods. Alice has never understood it. Alice is more of a savory kind of fan, you know, just like, give me a good steak or something, please. Uh, I think Alice is going to, or, or like, the like, in the area where, like, the judges kind of, like, hang out while they're waiting for everybody to bake. Are they away from that right now? Yeah, the judges' tent. Yeah, that's where Muriel found the Shattered Pretty Award. Okay, okay. I think... I think Alice wants to take the time to start, like, investigating around that area and just like the production area and try to see if she can like track down like where things that were used on Paul or like missing from and anything like that. If there was like a properties closet or a properties bin or anything like that, somebody like a PA might've had a hand in or anything like that. Cause typically on shows like this, there there's some very anal 
like manager production manager that's making sure that none of these things go missing and so you know yeah i'm into that go ahead and roll with um meddling move with composure i would say okay Oh. You're being watched. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use my. I don't think that. No, that's not going to fit. Yep. We'll just take disadvantage on this. Uh, that is another eight. Hmm. The complication is this. Someone has replaced the flower that all the contestants are using with rat poison. Indeed. You find empty flower bags and an empty rat poison container. Quite a few of them stuffed in a bin. It might have been rat poison on Paul's face. That's neither here nor there for the, for the moment. Because presently, Jane Leaf is frothing at the mouth. Heath is like quickly waving the camera away. She has foam spilling out of her mouth. And Timothy says, dear, don't worry. I'm told this is just anxiety. And she's like. (laughs) And she just falls face down dead can't have jane die and i can't have timothy blaming it on anxiety i'm gonna put on a crown absolutely gonna put on a crown double crowns two crowns <laughs> timmy two crowns then what i'll say instead is you just find an empty rat poison box okay. it has not been used in the it has not replaced all the flour that the bakers were using got it but it was Possibly standing in for flowers somewhere. In any case, it's your clue. I'm currently tickled by the notion of had that stayed. Just this is all that all was captured on camera. Cuts to Scott Lamb confessional, just being like, "I think the cake was rather disappointing." <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. They are now ready to declare the winner. Um, they were absolutely. The judges were absolutely head over heels for your turkey cake doll. They loved it. It was so beautiful. Um, the, the 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 turkey was beautifully rendered. It was delicious. Um, Timothy's like, what did you think of the feathering on the feathers? Wasn't that really good? And uh, he's like, and Timothy's also like, did you did you taste that little like? that little note of maple in there that thought that was, you know, he's like pointing out all the things because he's, I think he baked the cake and they it's, it's a, it's a Thanksgiving miracle doll. You won despite the fact that your pie was trash and they are ready to, they're, they're you know, they're, they're getting you there. Everyone's like, you know, they're, they're, they're filming you. And do you have anything you want to say? Never meet your heroes. And um, it'll be dubbed in for the actual episode where Doll will like open her mouth and it'll say, I've had such a wonderful time. I hope the Jolly Good Baking Show <laughs> lasts for another 15 seasons. Thank you, BBC and America. And then it cuts. <laughs> and... That will conclude our episode of the Jolly Good Baking Show. Oh, I think I froze for a little bit. Yeah. Um, in any case, the show is done. Mur- uh, once the cameras are out, Muriel's just in the background just being like, it's rigged. It's all bloody rigged. I can't believe it. I thought this was all real. I feel so betrayed. I think we need to have a word with the producer at some point, not just for the gross negligence of safety on set, but also for this horrendous mistreatment of its, it's contenders. Immoral. 
It is absolute. This show is a British institution. One of the few British institutions I actually give a damn about. Scott comes up to you and says, grow up, ladies. This is showbiz. That's how it I goes. grab him by the lapels. Listen here, you nasty twink. Just because the cameras aren't rolling anymore doesn't mean I can't give you a good whop and that'll entertain everybody on this bloody set. And I think he's like, he's like, <clears throat> I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> and, I... and you're not even a Brindlewood Bay local, not really. So you're a liar. I'm more local than you, boy. You have currently six clues on a six complexity mystery. Do you want to keep searching around? I think let's get one more clue. I thought one we had more. five clues. No, uh, the right poison. Oh, okay. Mm. I think one more. Mm. We've almost cracked this case. So other places you could check, Jane Leaf's trailer is unoccupied while mm. she does, you know, like little uh, post-episode interview or whatever, while she talks about how much she loved your turkey cake doll. And um, yeah, that's probably like your best, like that's the last kind of major place you haven't looked yet. Oh, and also Sue's trailer as well. And also, I'll just throw out there, I think that someone should probably talk to Heath, because none of us have actually talked with the producer uh, yet at all. I'm um, going to give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to go with you and support you every step of the way, girlie. And maybe you can do most of the threatening parts. Oh, she cracks her knuckles. <laughs> I'll take pictures. <laughs> Indeed. So you're all confronting Heath? Mm -hmm. Um, I... Definitely want to find Buck because I think that the recording stuff, I think I could do something with that. Okay, interesting. Um, I, Rosemary, when I think you go to find Buck, you catch Buck and Donna in an embrace. I, I take out my phone and I try to not so subtly uh, take a picture of it. You can do that. That's fine. And I'm just sending it to my fellow mavens in the group chat. Donna will eventually go away after kissing Buck on the cheek. And Buck will grab his camera and kind of head. He's kind of heading in your direction. What do you do, Rosemary? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to air see it. Uh, uh, Buck, uh, could I see you for a moment? Oh, hi, Ms. Mortimer. Uh, mm -hmm. Congratulations. I mean, not, you know, you didn't win, mm -hmm. but for being on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, this entire thing, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, I, uh, well, I just think it's it's all, it's just all a real shame. I mean, the whole situation is just so, it's just so unbearably tragic. I mean, the yeah. Jolly Good Baking Show is one of the few lights we have in this dark, dismal world. Tell me another show that can bring people together like this one can. Young and old, rich and poor, black and white. It's something we can all agree on, you know? And now that Paul is gone, it will never be the same. That mm -hmm. light is just a little bit dimmer now. Yeah. But is it worth it since it's all fake anyways? What? Like, what do you mean? Like, doll. Doll sucks at baking, I'll be honest. Her her turkey cake was amazing. She didn't make it. They brought like they swapped it out. Like she made a Paul Rubiera cake. <sighs> well, this is this is all too much to take in. Uh, uh, maybe I, maybe you could, uh, I don't know. Look the other way and just, I don't know, maybe the tape ends up in Brindlewood Bay proper. Oh, like some of his footage? Yeah. It's like... Make the meddling move with the presence. Mm -hmm. Um, I still have suspicious as a condition. I don't uh, know yeah. when that is. Yeah. No, I don't, I'm not going to make it count because I think he's too... He's very, like, naive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
he's naive and he he sees the best in people okay well thankfully i rolled a seven hmm. um he's gonna give you the tape but i think you're gonna have to give it context when we theorize you can say okay. what's on the tape to help your theory okay but you have the tape doll and muriel and alice you're all going to talk to heath is that the plan I think Talk along to. the way, Dahl stops suddenly and looks at a shelf that has all these little bottles of vanilla on them. Wait a moment. Look at these bottles. They say pure vanilla extract. But look at the color. Open it up. And I open up one of the bottles. This is imitation vanilla. You can tell. Imitation vanilla is made by refined petrochemicals. And real vanilla is from the world's uh, only edible fruit-bearing orchid. And I know, because I have an orchidarium now, and I'm trying to breed uh, different types of... Well, I'm not. My my manservant, Gerald, is doing it. But it's... it's Yes. <laughs> the important thing is they're passing off real vanilla, or fake vanilla, as real vanilla. And that's a clue because and that's of a clue. Encyclopedia right. Brown. <laughs> Very good. Love that. And also, I, see, I gather you were previewing your Nero Wolf move as well. Yeah, I've taken yes. Nero Wolf, so I have things like an Orchidarium and a houseboy named Gerald. Muriel is going to quote directly from the Truman Show. Just be like, well, what the hell does this have to do with anything? <laughs> Tell me what's happening, doll. They're liars. It's all lies. Everything here is fake. It's all lies. I think we need to have a firm chat with Mr. Hendricks at once. I'm going to show him what we know about this. And the murder stuff, too. You may not know how to bake, doll, but you sure have an eye for the truth. So this conversation with Heath can be you all revealing the killer or it can be pressing him for inf information. You have eight clues currently. So eight? Yeah, because you just picked up oh, two. Yeah. Really fast. Picked up yeah. two. Let's let's theorize. Let's theorize. Let's, let's take ten. It. We'll take ten so you can think about a theory, then we'll come back and we'll do it. Perfect. Okay, we are back, and I've heard just a little bit of what the group is planning on doing, and it's uh I'm anxious to hear how this goes. So theorize. Let's let's do the thing. Let's okay. review the clues first, though. Mm -hmm. So the clues are, uh, there was a ball gag tossed or kicked beneath the table near where Paul's body was found. A stack of love letters from the British Prime Minister with lipstick on it. We don't know who they're to, but you can fill that in um, as you're theorizing. A shattered British award. It was Paul's. Contractual trouble with Paul. Timothy Bush was about to be fired because he was lying about not knowing how to bake. Um, there's an empty rat poison box on set. There was the tape found by Rosemary, which is a clue that I think if you need to, if you need like a key detail for your theory, it's on this tape. And then um, they're using fake vanilla. <laughs> mm -hmm. Helpfully pointed out by Doll. So <laughs> what is the theory? All right, so I'll throw this out there and I'll allow my fellow mavens to be contextualizing the clues. Well, we, well the, the, the core of it, the summation is that Paul Riviera was murdered by Scott Lamb, who is an MI6 operative, and this was a hit by the British government. What? Okay. <laughs> Scott Lamb's MI6. All right, got it. Okay. Uh, get me there. <laughs> well, we have determined that the ball gag was actually an MI6 contraption that when bitten down on would shoot a poisonous gas <laughs> into the victim's so system. It's like a James to Bond. Yep. It's a James yes. it's a Q it's James ball Bond, gag. Q okay, branch, yeah, Q branch ball gag, yeah. <laughs> and that is how that was the the murder weapon. Mm -hmm. Great. Look here, 007. <laughs> All right, love that. Um that accounts for I suppose, is that accounting for the rat poison as well, or? Uh, no, the rat poison is separate. We'll get to that. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, so the, the love letters are, are to Paul from the Prime Minister, except mm. one of them is not a love letter from the Prime Minister. It is some threats about Paul wanting to make his relationship with the Prime Minister more public. Oh, and so there he are was... Officials... 
Oh, they sent MI6 like, after him. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, love that. All right, that'll that's all making sense. Um, keep going. Making sense is doing a lot of work there, but yeah. the contractual <laughs> trouble that Paul Riviera was having was more so blackmail trouble. Um, the BBC, of course, in in this is uh, owned by MI6, okay, and good. so they were uh, blackmailing him with his contract uh, in order to to be quiet. But Paul was going to talk anyway. Yeah, and I think that the way that this connects to the Timothy Bouche... Oh, Wes, did you have something? I was going to say, Timothy Bouche and Paul actually have a really good relationship, like a, a really strong kind of like camar camaraderie on set and everything. So maybe Timothy Bouche about to be fired for lying about not knowing how to bake is Timothy Bouche is catching strays, is going to be collateral damage that, for it, Paul... It, it, it wasn't that at all. I think he was, yeah, like he, he that's just the story he said. In fact, mm -hmm. he's like being targeted, like harassed yeah. and pressured the same as he was. I, I think he, I, go ahead. play ball, play ball, or Timothy's gone too. You're both gone, and you're I never think, gonna have another yeah. season of the powerful fielding, or you know, we're not gonna do a reunion for the HR gang or anything. <laughs> like, I think, I think, I mean, any, I mean, listen, if you if you work for the BBC, you know they're evil. You know that they're owned by some shady government organizations. Your show I think, gets canceled forever, forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think specifically as well, like the the you know him covering for that. That's the B, the BBC is evil element, but how it ties into the murder as well. It was he, it was an offhand comment. And he's just like, he's like, you know, well, I think Paul and I would really get along, you know, like, you know, it'd be great mm -hmm. to have him on the show, you know, and, and the BBC director is just like, Paul's not going to be a problem for much longer. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. And like, so, you know, what's best for you. And I think, you know, in off minor detail in the background of the office, like is a picture of like the head of the BBC shaking, like the director of MI6's hand. Like it, it's some minor detail like that mm -hmm. it's from the office. Yeah. But the rat poison is where things get interesting. Okay. Um, you know how Doll's cake got replaced? It did. Like the yeah. turkey cake? Mm -hmm. Well, fun fact about the original cake, it's been poisoned because Doll was supposed to take the fall for the murder. Oh, very good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they were framing. They were framing. Yep. They were and framing Timothy, Doll. it was, I established that it was Timothy's turkey cake. So maybe Timothy actually like coordinated the switch out knowing what was going to happen, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I, oh man, Timothy is, is a good one because he just like he's like he's like, I thought, it's like I'm not gonna give in to this. I'm gonna he swaps yeah. out the cake. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Gets in there, yeah. Saves the and day. they couldn't very well like like they couldn't like stop. Yeah, like they, yeah, they, yeah. They, because you know, yeah. Doll lost the first round. She is clearly this obsessed fan who is mm. taking on yeah. camera taking this really hard. Scott was gonna have her be the patsy for the operation mm. of of having uh, Jane would would die by eating the cake. Okay, but who's going to jail thing? for this though? Like oh, who's Scott. The... Scott. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Specifically, Scott. Okay. Great. Yeah. I feel like he'll probably MI6 will probably sneak him out, disappear him. Yeah. yeah he'll yeah. get extradited, and then he'll just like be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But... It, it, yeah. Get lost well, in the system. But well, you'll have done well, your job at least. You, so. I I actually would say I don't think so because uh, thinking about the 1996 cinematic masterpiece The Rock, starring Nick Cage and Sean Connery. Oh, how uh, could I forget? Exactly. If I'm not going to go into the whole theory about how that's actually a James Bond movie, but in that movie, Sean Connery's character isn't is a British intelligence agent who is captured by the U.S. government for committing crimes on U.S. soil. And uh, the British government is like, uh, we, out of our hands, we're going to let him be. Because, I mean, like, it is canon in the James Bond movies. Anyway. Like, M will let, like, agents be like, you know, oh, it's a complication. We're not going to let this fall on the British government. We're just going to mm -hmm. let him they be just let him, in captivity. They let him cook, <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, okay, great. I love that. Okay, so this is getting really good. You've got five clues so far. Let's keep going. The oh. Shattered Britty Award is just part of the plan to have a patsy. Uh, if you were to analyze the Shattered Britty Award, you would see Doll's fingerprints on it. Oh. They picked up the fingerprints from when she was touching flour at her baking station. Yeah. You might have even been handling the Britty Award. You might have been like, oh, Maybe. look at this, like because you oh, love the show so much. That, yeah. Yeah, that ties into what, what I was thinking about for uh, Rosemary's tape. If you, if you, if you uh, like this angle I'm going with this chaotic, let me know. Mm -hmm. I think 
the it does not capture the murder, but it captures several instances on in the background of Scott doing things. For example, like walking up like casually while moving between, you know, shots, taking out a roll of tape and like putting it down on the, mm -hmm. the flower touch surfaces to pull doll's fingerprints and yeah. tuck it away into his apron. And there are several instances where like um Scott like wipes like you know like flour from his face or like wipes just something from his like just sweat from his brow but if you if you watch the shot carefully he's actually pulling up to his watch and talking into it mm. <laughs> good is that the tape i love it that's Absolutely. really good mm -hmm. that's very very good okay I love, I'm, I'm feeling that um the okay vanilla, so the, what's the vanilla if you look closely at these bottles of vanilla on the bottom it says uh, has the logo of the BBC on it. The BBC was making these fake bottles of vanilla. <laughs> they have a fake vanilla thing They're just going evil. On. They're evil. To give it more clarity, um, that's how the rat poison was delivered. Uh, they oh, replaced the water oh, vanilla with like fake vanilla I because like they were like, oh, oh so who it's are like, you revealing this to? To Heath Hendricks or to the police? Like how are how is the how are you catching Scott here? Police, not the police. Oh, uh, well, and also we got a roll, but yeah. But what's yeah. the like? Uh, I think to Heath. No, he's, he's, he's the he's no, the BBC. He's the BBC. He's, the BBC. BBC. he's yeah. part no. of it. Um, yeah. we are going to we. I think what in our confrontation. I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Heath is not like involved in the hit but he, he is an a you know he's with the bbc the bbc are all evil uh we're, it's just gonna be a confrontation i think though we are gonna get buck to turn the cameras on um, oh okay and, yeah yeah. Uh, so they, if, they, yeah okay good they can't hide can, it yeah yeah if i can introduce a detail because i think this actually would tie really well into what alice did this session um because you went like to the, the the prison like that's not like the county jail that's not like the sheriff's department that's the yeah, prison it's like good, like, yeah. like, like maybe boston yeah, maybe you got some like um federal officials um that you can have uh kind of on site or I don't know like arrive like um... drop drop the you know drop the hint while I was at the prison being like and I'll tell you right now over in Brindlewood Bay they're shooting you know the jolly the jolly jolly green giant bacon show or whatever it's called <laughs> and like spoiler alert somebody died there like dead dead and it could be something extra just like drop a line so that like you know yeah. all... and since you can even if you blah, you could have said somebody died there somebody not american to get the feds involved because yeah. then it's interjurist interjurisdictional mm -hmm. inter no inter yeah. i love it yeah, it's it's true. great uh let's have a plus two on the roll whoever's gonna roll I've been rolling like booty today, so if somebody think, else wants to take I think it. it. I think it should I'll be the Patsy. I was gonna say, I, I think was it the be... Patsy. The doll, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm so nervous. Ah, <laughs> uh, I rolled a was it plus two. Plus two. Plus two. I rolled an eleven. <gasps> Very good. Success. I think, as the feds are arresting Scott Lamb. Heath Hendricks, I think, is already like already like pretending like he doesn't know who Scott is, or like you know, like he's he's already like kind of like defending the BBC, right? Like kind of like you know, helping helping. He wants the feds to arrest Scott, and Scott's like, and 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 Scott looks at Heath and says, "I'm going to be extradited back to the UK, though, right?" And Heath says. No, Scott, I'm afraid not. We, in an effort to make your presence on this episode more believable, we had your citizenship entirely negotiated with the U.S. State Department. You are an American citizen. And he's like red-faced and furious. And the episode ends with Sue saying, well, that was a regular Tinker Taylor Baker spy, huh? <laughs> And that will conclude the Great Brindlewood Bay Bake Off. <laughs> Alice doesn't get dry British humor at all. <laughs> she's like, she's like, um, and, uh, can we get like a, just a quick, uh, just a quick little scene with like uh, Timothy Bush at the end? Because he seems like he was, sure, really, yeah. he was a oh, really yeah, lovely yeah, fella. Course. Like we, yeah. he was trying to help us out there. Yeah, I think I think we'll have Muriel and Timothy, and he'll say, 
You know, if I've learned anything from Paul's death, it's that, well, you probably need to be very, very careful with who you have sexual relations with, especially when you're on a set and when you have so many enemies. But also I've learned that you have to really just embrace the now, you know, because you never know when you're going to be found poisoned by a trick ball gag in your trailer. Could happen to any of us. Any of us. And so... One day you're upright on top of the world, and next day you're face down, ass up. I've decided to embrace my first love. Bacon? No, acid jazz. Oh, really? Yes. What do you What do you play? You know, an instrument. Just any. All right. Well, you know, I'm more of an ideas man. I really. like, no, I, you know, I like it. I like it. And, you know, you could be the first acid jazz musician to bake for his own concerts. That's an interesting approach. Hmm. I shall oh. consider it. Good. And if you ever need anything, Mr. Bush, you know where to call me. He's like, thank you, my little shortbread. And he gets up and and gives you a hug. Oh. If anybody has any crowns they need to do, now's a great time to do it. Absolutely. Go ahead, Alice. Uh, I think I've got two that I've got to do, but I'll do one and I'll save one for later. Um, I think we're going to do a flashback of my fondest memory of my late partner. We're going to learn a little bit about Trooper. Um. I think as Alice is like kind of watching everything from kind of like behind, because like, you know, baking's not really a lot of her things. She's taking photos of everything of like Scott being carried away uh, of, of uh, Timothy and um, our dear, uh, our our dear Muriel spending time with each other doll looking despondent and distressed, just like, just like touching different surfaces of the show uh, and like Rosemary, just just b- taking it all in and everything, and catches the sight of a robin. It's getting a little bit too late in the year, but this one's still out and about. She snaps a photo of it, and with the snap, we cut back to uh, a trail in West Virginia hiking along and we see a gentleman who's about 33 34 years old uh he's lean wiry he's got a hungry look about him very much the investigative reporter type uh a very much like a Jake Gyllenhaal uh if you will um but he's wearing like hiking clothes he's wearing uh his his university his Marshall University like crew neck sweater, some very short, like five inch inseam shorts hiking alongside. Uh, and um, he just says, he's like, why are you always taking pictures of birds like that? And you hear Alice go, a younger Alice say, I don't know. I just really respect how birds live. And he goes, what do you mean how birds live? Olinger. And then Alice says, Olinger. And she says, I don't know. I just like how they could go anywhere in the world they wanted to, but they always make a nest and come back to it. Especially robins. There's something very permanent about something that could fly anywhere. Always like having a nest. And he's like pausing and looking at her. He says, that's got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard come from your mouth, Alice Olinger. And she kind of shoves him a little bit. Um, and they just continue walking along the trail. And then we cut back. Fabulous. Thank you. Are there any other crowns? 
Okay. Well, um, so we're going to lose Wes early today. So I figure we'll go ahead and just call it a session um, and we'll pick up fresh next week. Let's go ahead and go to end of session questions. Did the murder maven solve a mystery? Yes, you did. Everybody gets credit for that. Uh, Rosemary, did you show someone that you've still got it? I don't think so. Did you behave like a woman half your age? Yes, I, I stole from people. So and I don't think like an elderly woman would just like put her hands in like other people's <laughs> purses and whatnot. Sounds good to me. Doll, did you share a memory of a late family member? I did not. Did you behave like a woman half your age? I don't think so. Muriel, did you share a memory of a late family member? Gavin and Muriel's favorite show That's was right. the HR yeah. gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you show someone that you've still got it? I grabbed that twink by the lapels and shook him. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Uh, Alice, did you? Yes, you did share a memory of a late family member there in the flashback. And did you behave like a woman half your age? I think the only closest thing would be going to a prison to see a I'll convicted take it. murderer. Yeah, 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 because you're probably exactly half Jodie Foster's age in Silence of yeah. the Lambs, so or probably <laughs> or she's half your age, right? Um, so <laughs> I'll take it. Um, fantastic. Let's go to Stars and Wishes. Whoever wants to go first, take it away. Uh, I gotta give a star for Atlas for uh not having her breakdown in the car but still like just like honking at like the like the children now. <laughs> just like <laughs> it, it, uh... it, it really shows how we we are all friends in this group we 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 wake up and choose violence every day every day <laughs> Uh, my star. Uh, 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 I like. I always give everybody a star, but everybody did so great. Uh, doll playing along, just like just y y Amanda, you playing this whole person's per per like reality being shattered in front of them and just taking it in stride while also serving solving a murder. A plus, Jason. <laughs> the prison scene. You leaning into the Malkovich of uh, of Albert Krauss. I loved it. I could just see like the hit. It, it's just, it's the exact same scene, but it's just with two different actors going on. Uh, very much cat and mouse. I loved it. Um, Rosemary, just ah, perfect, like chaotic, perfect uses of your mo moves and everything like that. You have some of my favorite moves for the ultimate move set, and like you're using them really wonderfully. Uh, and then uh, Xander. Come on. That, see that, that, that crown scene with Hamish. Mm -hmm tugged at my heartstrings and then with timothy again immediately after tugged at my heartstrings so good job on that yeah so so stars there uh wishes i hope we get to do this again you know very soon um because i'm having so much fun this is a highlight to my week is every sunday getting to have a little bit of tea and then play some brittlewood bay yeah, I got to throw out some stars there as well. Star to Jason for absolutely uh, doing the funniest possible option of them being like, Alice is dead. We're just going to say she's dead. Roll the <laughs> memorial. <laughs> like, Just also really helped our theory of the BBC being evil. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, that was that was so funny. Um, Wes, the... Uh, I was so excited to finally see the uh, Clary Starling move in play. And I couldn't have been happier that you picked Albert Krauss because I knew it was going to be a Malkovich thing. Uh, so I was very happy. And I love, listen, I love Sounds of the Lambs. And that was role played so wonderfully and like kind of like creepy and off putting, but also completely absurd because it's just visually John Malkovich. <laughs> uh, that was great. Um, Star Doll, as always, being the just kind of like the like, this poor woman amanda and you always roll with it in the funniest possible way of just like she is either out of her depth completely anxious or completely like out of touch with the modern era and as like just with the whole like the 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 cake situation and the cake itself you killed me with that the fact that you photoshopped <laughs> that together was the funniest goddamn thing you could have done that was highlight absolute mm -hmm. highlight um and what was and extra funny about that if i could just interject yeah, is like you would just 
scrape off that part of the frosting that said R.I.P., but you scratched it out with more icing. <laughs> that was pretty great. This goes to show how bad Doll is at this whole thing. <laughs> um, and oh my god, I just realized there wasn't a single dildo joke this episode. Oh my god! Wow, first time. Doll um, is uh, becoming more mature. <laughs> Her, yeah i love that um and then chaotic the good i mean rosemary is such a subtly like a subtle character most of the time before she has these like hands thrown over her head kind of moment of like what do you mean she's very much it feels like the straight woman of the thing the most of the time because in, in 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 for doll muriel and alice we are mostly grounded we have our moments of like just kind of ridiculousness, but Rosemary's just kind of just like she is like the most like normal, average, you know, golden yeared woman here of the group. Yeah, uh, it's so funny just to frequently just have like, just cut back to you being like, and meanwhile, I'm having a completely average experience over here. Yeah, I, I just it's just my type of character, honestly. Like, I I like to play the normal ones, oddly enough, even though sometimes I play very, very complicated moves. Like, I I quite literally, like, had, my, like, like, all three of my Maven moves go off in a row. Like, just yeah, like... Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, that's one of my wish. star... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I, oh, no, I, I, was, I thought you were done. Now. Go ahead, okay. wish now. My wish is that I'm uh, excited to see, because I think we're going into Christmas next. I'm excited to see the Christmas mysteries mm -hmm. um, roll in. Uh, utterly terrified of more void clues. Um, and I think my other wish is, no, I already said, I said the last time, I'm looking forward to our first sweeps week mystery, but I know that's down the line a bit. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to the Christmas stuff. Uh, star, I want to second the star of, uh, of, rosemary's moves firing off the way they did i thought it was really clever it was a great way of like utilizing the system at a, or playing the game at a mechanical level which was really fun for me to see um i i enjoyed doll in this a lot uh the cake killed me absolutely killed me um but then even just in addition to that like the there was this sense that like of all the mavens only doll really gives a shit about the jolly good baking show that like none of the rest of them do and so um and so it was like kind of there was like a really like rich irony and like doll being the patsy in the theory star for the theory the theory was so so fun and enjoyable um just just very enjoyable and a great way of like adding context to the clues to like make it all kind of come together um that I feel like that's how it would go in like a in like the TV show version of this, you know, like it would be that kind of like kind of slightly absurd, but like, you know, um, kind of fun thing. And so I, I love that. Um, love the flashbacks in both crowns. I thought those were really terrific. Just just very emotional. And it's really fun to see those two mavens um, in that context. Right. Like these are real characters. They are ground. They are grounded in a certain reality of their own. And um and i really liked it i particularly like trooper and alice's relationship um i thought that was really quite interesting and um and then alex taking the taking the moment to like mirror what was going on with timothy in your flashback i thought was really great as well so yeah good stuff all around there um i really really loved the uh the whole scene of like going into the prison is such a like classic thriller movie scene you know like where you you have to check into the prison you got to do this you got to do that you get led down the hall there's prisoners yelling at you like it was just very funny to see it in this context and uh and then the scene itself with Malkovich or Krauss was also very very fun so yeah just good stuff all around and wish um I yeah uh I guess my wish is I'm really interested to see a few things in the story i don't know how they're going to happen but i'm i i'm in control of it so i'll just be curious to see how it, if i have any opportunities to bring back isaiah bring back corinne like because they're they can't just like show up down the street now can they because they're like outed as villains right like uh they've committed crimes like so uh i'm curious to see how they're going to be reintroduced to the story and i'm also really curious to find out what other midwives are out there i think that'll be mm -hmm. fun to do as well so um my stars have been really already said by everybody just really really fun session uh, everybody was firing on all cylinders for their character, and it was just a really 
great time. Thank you for laughing at my face cake joke. Uh, I found that yesterday and I was like, well, this clearly is the cake that Doll's going to make. Um, yeah, the I really loved uh, Rosemary's sequence of moves. I thought it was my star. Um, Alex, your interaction with Timothy was awesome. It was so touching, uh, but also kind of silly. Uh, so that was really good. And I laughed really hard at, at HR gang. Um, Alice and Malkovich, that talk, that was tense. It was really good. It was it was like, you know, watching Silence of the Lambs, but with these people instead. And it, that was just, it's one of those moments in, you know, in Brindlewood Bay where something weird and unsettling is happening, but it's a little bit funny. Um, that that line that Brindlewood Bay likes to walk, and it was it was just a really great moment. Um, yeah, so stars for all of you. That was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> My wish is. Um, oh, now that I have a houseboy, um, I'm excited to see what Gerald will do. <laughs> Star for naming him Gerald, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, what's my houseboy's name going to be? And then, it, of course, of course, it's Gerald. Mm -hmm. Got to yeah. name him after my goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's a different game. A trophy game. <laughs> yeah. Is it Stars and Wishes for everybody? Oh, no, Cat, you haven't gone yet, have you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing the Nero uh, wolf stuff in action because that's it's just like it's it's simultaneously not doll's vibe but however at the same time it makes sense that only doll could have picked up this move yeah I won I won a bingo I won the big one <laughs> now I have all this stuff <laughs> is that is that everything okay um awesome well thank you all so much let's wave goodbye to people watching the video goodbye